third grade and welcome back. Okay, so now that you've finished your review of the space perspective drawing tricks, the six tricks that I taught you, we're gonna take those tricks and put them into our landscape picture. And we're gonna be making a picture of a desert landscape. So I'm gonna start off by showing you some pictures of the desert. And then when we draw this together, you're gonna to see how we use these tricks to make our picture look more real. Now, things are gonna look close and far away. Again, that's what perspective is all about. And you're gonna take a few weeks to do this, drawing out the landscape and then coloring it. And that's gonna be our project now. All right, so let's go get started. First, I'm going to show you some pictures of a desert landscape and what deserts look like. For those of you who may never have seen the desert before, or maybe you've just forgotten, in a desert landscape, there are these red rock mountains, and you see these in the distance. They are very, very big mountains that are jagged in different sizes, and some are overlapping. And in the land part, you see different kinds of plants. It's very dusty and rocky, and there's also what's called cacti, which are a lot of cactus. Now, in this picture, there is a horizon line, and that is that horizontal line that goes across your page. We've done this many times in many of our landscape drawings. This shows us where the sky and the land come together and touch. So they meet at the horizon line. In this picture now, there are the mountains again in the far away distance, and the size of them is a lot smaller. There also is a road, and the road is going back to a certain kind of point on the horizon line, and the road seems to disappear. This is called the vanishing point. We've done this in our space review. Hi everybody. So we are gonna get started now of drawing our desert landscape. I know in the video I showed you some examples of what a desert looks like in case you didn't know or didn't remember. But just to re quickly review our space perspective drawing techniques, these are the tricks that we're gonna be putting into our drawing now of the desert landscape. And this is what's also gonna make everything look very real. So. In your review, we did overlapping, size, detail, line, placement, and color. And we'll be coloring this as the last part of the project, and you'll see. So I'm gonna draw along with you right now, show you how to draw the desert landscape, how to put in all of those tricks, and then you're gonna do that on your own, and that'll be this week. The first assignment. thing that we have to do when we go to draw any kind of landscape is put in that horizon line. And I know we discussed that before when I was showing you some of the pictures. So you need to come straight across and I'm gonna go pretty much in the middle of my paper, okay? If you wanna actually do it a little bit higher to give you more ground, that's fine. You could do it a little bit higher, but don't go too much. You wanna have enough room to put in all of our things. But again, the horizon line is super important because that tells us that from the top of the paper to that line, all of this is the sky up here. And from the line down to the bottom of the paper, all of this is going to be our land. Okay, so going from there, let's start by putting in our line. It was our fourth perspective trick. Let's put in a line that is going to look like it's going back to the horizon line. Now I know we've done this in the past and we've usually done a road. This time we're gonna make our line actually look like train tracks. Let's make this picture look a little bit different than our same old boring road going down in a landscape. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find a vanishing point. So anywhere that you want this train track to disappear in the distance, I'm gonna kinda of put mine maybe right there. You don't have to make a mark or anything, but just know for yourself where you wanna put it. And I'm going to draw a diagonal line from the bottom of my paper back to the horizon line, okay? From there, I need to do the other side of my train track. So train tracks, unlike a road where it could be a little bit uh, wavy or you can have a curve to it, this, I need it to be straight. The horizon line didn't need to be straight. Don't worry about that because your land is not perfectly straight outside and a desert would not be perfectly straight. So you don't have to worry about using a ruler for any of this, but I do want you to try to make the train track as straight as you possibly can. Okay, getting back to it. So my line, like in our technique practice, Diagonal line going back. I want you to skip a space, move it over because actually this is like size too. It's wider in the front 
And as it goes back to the vanishing point, it kind of disappears. Now, you don't have to make it touch. You could if you want to totally make it look like it's disappearing or you could get it really close to it. So you see, I did mine just really close. And that is my first part. That is my first trick that I'm using, which was line. Close and far away. The train tracks look like they're disappearing. The next part of this to make the train track is I need to just draw another, um, actually, no, you know what? I'm gonna come across it and I'm gonna make some horizontal lines. If you'd like to use a ruler, you can for this, or if you don't have a ruler at home, see, because I don't like the way that looks. So actually, I don't want a crooked train track here. I will use a ruler. I have one, but if you don't have a ruler, you can use anything that has a straight hard edge. You can use a piece of mail from home. I do that sometimes. You can take another piece of paper and just fold it so you get a nice edge. And I'm gonna make my horizontal line. Now, I'm going to double it up. These are gonna be the inside part, like the wood, um, the, the wood rectangles for my train check. So I'm gonna come across, I'm actually gonna draw on the bottom just so you could see. Never really do that. Draw, always put your pencil at the top. I just did that to show you. So here is my first board of the train track. I'm gonna skip a space now and I wanna do the second board. You also wanna space them evenly a little bit. So in order to see, I could see it along my edge over here. I'm gonna just do it like that so you can always see that you should be putting your pencil at the top. Okay, so this is my first board. There's my second board. I'm gonna do that going all the way back. Again, skip a space. I'm gonna do that going all the way back. There's my third board. Okay, when you'll see it once we color it in. And because my diagonal lines on the side are getting closer together, these boards are getting shorter. Smaller. And you can also make it look like it's closer together. So there you go, that is my train track. And again, one last thing I wanna to do to add to this is I'm gonna make a diagonal line going back. I'm gonna just give a little bit of space here. I'm gonna double it up because the way it looks like the boards are connected to the rails. This is the rail of our train track where the train would go. Okay, like so. The next thing I'm gonna be adding into my picture are going to be some of those mountains in the background, those big red rock mountains. Now, again, you know that mountains, if you were looking up at them, they would be very, very big if you were standing in front of them. But since they're back at the horizon line, it's going to look like it's farther away. So that could be considered size, or really, too, with this drawing, I'm gonna put be putting these mountains up higher. Now, I'm not going all the way up to the top of the paper, but I am going towards the top of my paper, which remember was placement. So I'm placing this further up, higher on my page. So that's again, another trick. The mountains I'm gonna do, again, mountains have to start in the on the ground. So I have to start under my horizon line. And I'm gonna make those red rock mountains Again, they're bumpy, so don't worry about drawing any kind of perfect straight line. And I'm gonna come across, and it kind of looks almost like a rectangle or a square. And I'm gonna come down like that. I'm gonna, you can make some look like they are further off in the distance. And I'm gonna go on an angle like that. Oh, I went off my page in the video. Sorry, on my paper I could still see it. I can go over here, I could come and you want to start and stop in different places. I can go right on the horizon line to really make it look like it's far away in the distance. This one looks a little bit closer because I'm still on the ground, but because this is on the horizon line, it looks farther away. I want to actually, I'll put this one back. So it's a little bit further back from where I started this mountain, but it's going to come up and I could come across. And I stop over there. So now look what I've created. Another trick, 
This mountain looks like it's in front of that one. Does anyone remember that, what that's called? Overlapping, I think I heard. I know someone said it out there. Okay, overlapping. So my first mountain that I drew now looks like it's overlapping that other one I just did, that taller one. And I'm erasing the horizon line to, so, to help show you that so you can also see that. Now this mountain looks like it's in front of that one. Um, I can go, maybe I'll put another one going in the back like that. And now I have this mountain, again, blocking this part, and I only did a half a line. So again, it looks like it's overlapping. This mountain would continue if this one wasn't in front. I'm gonna put a few more on the right side as well, just to make this look just as interesting, except this mountain, maybe I'll come out. It's like a pointy kind of mountain like that and come down. I wanna kind of do it the same way. Uh, remember if I wanna make it lower, I could do a little mountain in front, a little base like that. And I'm gonna make this one go off into the side like that. And once again, erase those horizon line, that horizon line. So it looks like it's overlapping. Now you can see too, after I erased, I erased part of my mountain away as well. No big deal. If that happens, that's okay. My bit my eraser was big. I would just go back and redraw. Let me draw what I erased. I like how this looks over here on this side. So I'm gonna continue some of those as well in the background over here. Not too many, I don't wanna to take too much away from my picture. So that looks good. I, I'm Once I color it red, it'll definitely look like mountains in the background that's part of our desert. Okay, let's keep going. Let's make now the I'm gonna make something that has some details. I think I'll move on to something with some detail. So in my picture here, I'm going to put my rocks. I think we have rocks that are going on a diagonal here. And you know what, actually, I'm getting the idea more like this. Let's use size, let's talk about size first. So remember how we had those three circles in this picture here, three, and even though they were all on the same level, the smaller one looked like it was further away. Let's do that with some rocks in here. So it's not a perfectly round rock, but again, I can make these rocks on an angle, almost like how I did the mountains. I am kind of putting it on the same level and again, because this guy is a little smaller, it looks like it's a little bit further back. The bigger one stands out. Uh, I'm also going to put in, going back to what I was saying before about detail, we could put in, how about a cactus? And if a cactus was close to us, again, I'm using size, it's gonna be close to me, so it's gonna be bigger. And I'm also gonna have that detail. So in order to draw a cactus, I have to start with a vertical line. I'm gonna, I like going back and forth from left to right side. So I make sure I get the same kind of lines because if you go up and around and around, it's, it's kind of hard to do it all in one motion. So I make my vertical lines first. I'm gonna have my arm of my cactus come out. And now these don't have to be exactly perfect. But I have the two arms that come out. They're usually round as it comes back in. Now, once I get to where my point was over here of the base of my cactus, I'm gonna make sure I go up. And this one's a little bit higher in the middle. And it comes down. And then I come around and I connect it like that. Okay, so there is my cactus. And the cactus has some details. Remember again, in my example, when I said there's detail, look at how the leaf had those veins. So my cactus that is close to me in the front, I would see that it has some lines here first, dividing up. 
And I'm also going to do something that makes it look like it has texture. Those little prickly, spiky thorns. So I'm going to just do some zigzag. I'm going to do zigzag or just kind of diagonals that look like the sharp points. And actually, this could be considered overlapping too. Because if I go outside of the rim of the cactus here, I would erase it. That's overlapping the edge of it. Once I overlap that edge, it looks like it's in front. If you erase too much, don't worry. Go back and lightly redraw it. Like so. Okay, looks like a really good cactus to me. Very realistic. And size again. I'm going to put another cactus or a detail actually. I'm going to put it back into the background here closer it doesn't have to be all the way back if it was all the way back it would be very very tiny I wouldn't see it uh, so definitely don't make it the same size as this one you can if you want to bring it in the front you could put it anywhere as long as it's further back from this one that's fine by me but I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller again and it's kind of fuzzy definitely we would not see any of those thorns or the line work because it's far away so we wouldn't see any details that are far away let's do one more thing of placement another example of placement what i'm going to do is put in a bird let's say that there was a bird a vulture right flying in the sky so at the top of my paper i'm going to put in uh, my vulture now i am going to make it a decent size Maybe I'd have the B coming down and I curve it like that. And I have the like a s oval body. Okay, I'll just go in the back like that. And the wings, I have my wings because again, he's flying. I'm gonna curve like that. And the vulture has a tail that comes out kind of like triangular. You can make it kind of once you fill this in and once we color it. We have the legs, I don't know, something along, something along the lines like that, looking for something to eat. I'm not going to go too crazy with this. I need to erase that part of it so it all looks connected. Okay, so I have my vulture that's up in the sky here, and I'll go in and I can make the wings look a little bit more curved and fix that up. Again, that would be a detail, um, but... I'm also gonna put a vulture because I'm doing placement right now. I have my vulture that's at the top of the paper and I'm gonna put another one. And my other vulture is gonna be down lower. Again, because this vulture is up in the sky towards the top of my paper, it does look like it's farther away. It's just something that we realize naturally on our own. The only thing is I don't wanna make a vulture look like it's flying down here. I wouldn't really be flying on the ground too much. So I'm going to make my vulture sitting on a perch. And I'm going to make as if it was on like this stump. Maybe there was an old cactus that kind of broke off. It got old. So it kind of looks kind of look like a tree stump a little bit like that. So I have that come out. I would have some rocks. I'm just going to do some down curves to kind of look like dirt pile or rocks in front of it. And now I'm going to put my other vulture sitting over here. So again, I'm going to start with the top curve for the head. I have a down curve for the beak. I don't like that. Closed mouth. Okay, there. So my I do a down curve, and then I did an up curve to make it look like the beak was closed going into the curve of the body. And then I would have my wings. I have another, another down curve and the wings are off to the side. And maybe you see his claws, his feet coming in front as he's perched up on there. Down curve for the eye. And again, if we go in and I can make some curved lines more for the feathers 
and that would be a detail. I'm not gonna go too much with my regular pencil. I can save that more when I add in my color. Uh, one more thing, I don't know. Everything looks good. Now, if there's any empty space, if you feel there are big empty spaces, you can add in any other details that you'd like. Uh, there's in a desert, I'll just put one maybe over here because I feel like this has an empty space in this area here. I would make it a medium size. If you've ever seen like the skull of say uh, cattle or steer, okay, you have that that maybe you wanna put. Sometimes we see those in pictures of deserts. It would just be black like that. It would be like the skeleton. You just see that and maybe the bones. And again, because it's smaller, it's something that's smaller, you're not gonna go in with too much detail. So just some curved lines that make it look like the bones there for, I should make that look a little bit more even. Something like that. And you could actually put one maybe going this way. Again, a bone. And there's also what's called those tumbleweeds. Tumbleweeds roll through the desert. And I could just do that with, I think I have an empty space over here. So again, very lightly, I'll go over it with my, my colored pencil when I do this. I would just have some spiral loopy lines to kind of look like tumbleweeds going through the background. And I wanna put another one smaller because I feel like there's an empty space here. I could do another tiny little one. Again, it's further back. So that's one of my tricks. Okay, so there you go. That takes up some of the empty negative space in my picture. My picture looks nice and full and complete now. I think I used all of my uh, space perspective techniques. I have my horizon line, which was the first most important thing. I used line. I used overlapping for the mountains. I use size for my rocks. I have detail in my cactus along with size as well. I definitely have details in the, the objects, my extras that I added in. And I have placement, placement of my vultures that are pretty much the same size, but because this one's higher, it looks further away. So I hope you do a really great job with this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect take your time. It's not going to look like mine. And I'm happy about that. Everyone has their own style. I just want you to try your best. That's all I need you to do is try your best in drawing your desert landscape. Take a picture, show me what you think, show me what you did. And we'll go on to the last part, our last trick, which will be color. Bye everyone.